This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin on Daf Kuf Dalet that there was a woman in the neighborhood of Ram Gamliel, and uh, every night she would cry for uh, a son. And when Ram Gamliel would hear this woman cry, he would also cry for the Churim Beis Hamikdash. So I was thinking this afternoon, it's a famous question. What did this woman's crying have to do with the uh, Churban that it elicited the cry from Ram Gamliel? In Eicha, we don't only talk about the Churim Beis Hamikdash, we also talk about the B'nai Tzioin Hayikarim. We talk about the young people that were taken. What does that have to do with Churim Beis Hamikdash? But I think there's a certain, uh, if you want to be able to experience the majesty and the splendor and the beauty of the Shechina that was in the uh, Beis HaMikdash, sometimes uh, the only way to get a taste of it is to see the, the face of the B'nai Tzion Hayekarim, the precious Neshamos who are taken, and then from there we say, we get a sense what it means, Chor Beis HaMikdash. And we don't know what a Beis HaMikdash is, but unfortunately... We know who these young people are who reflected and represented the splendor and the beauty of the Beis HaMikdash. So we hope that tonight's learning should be Le'ile Nishmas, Reiz Obas, Moshe Aaron. I had this chus to become uh, very close with uh, Rav Moshe Morgenstern over the last few years. And um, knowing his beautiful personality and uh, his uh, holy neshama, so uh, I think... Uh, we feel a little bit what it means, B'nai Tzion Hayekarim, what it says in Eicha. And therefore we hope that these Shiva de Nechemta, these seven weeks, bring Nechama to the Morgenstern family and to Shara uh, Avei Leitzion Yerushalayim. So I want to talk about the Shiva de Nechemta. Uh, actually, very interesting. The Shiva de Nechemta are the most important Haftarahs of the entire year. So what does that mean, the most important Haftarah? Why would there be any Nafkamina between uh, one Haftarah and another Haftarah? It's interesting. It's brought in Shulchan Aruch in Simen Taf Reish Ches, Siv Zayin. Shulchan Aruch says, From Shavas of Tamazanan, we are Maftir Gimel de Paranusa, Shiva de Nechemta, Tarti de Tiyufta. Three Haftarahs of Paranios, three of punishment, seven Haftarahs of Nechama, seven Haftarahs of consolation, and two Haftarahs of Tshuva. And the Shulchan Aruch says, what are the Gimel de Paranusa, Divrei Yermia, Shimu Dvar Hashem, Chazoin Yeshayahu. These are the three Haftarahs of Paranos. And the Shulchan, Shulchan Aruch says, the Shiva de Nechemta, Arnachamu, last week, Vatoim Artsiyoin, it's coming Shabbos, Ania Soyara, Anoichi, Rani Akara, Kumi Oiri, Sois Asis. And then you have the two weeks of... Tshuva, Tarti de Tiyufta. The two weeks of Tshuva are Dirshu Hashem, Bihimatsi that we lay in Mincha time on Sam Gedalia, and then of course we have Shabbat Shuva, Shuva Yisrael. Twelve Haftairas. Shloisha de Paranusa, Shiva de Nechemta, Tarti de Tiyufta. It's Mamish Haflava Fel. If I were to ask you, we're in Talmud Babli, we're in Shas, does it talk about these Haftairas? The answer is nowhere. They're not mentioned in Shas. <laughs> so you say, they're not mentioned in Shas. So how could they be the most important Haftarahs of the year? And even though they're not mentioned in Shas, they're the most important Haftarahs of the year. So what do we mean? If you look in Toysvis, in Megillah, on Daf Lam and Aleph on the base, it's number seven on your sheets, the Gemara on the Sefs of Megillah, on Daf Lam and Aleph on the base says, Roish Chodesh Av, that falls out on Shabbos, the Haftorah that we lay in is Chodshechem Umayadechem Sano Nafshi. Very interesting, because we don't do that. What it says in Shas, we don't do. Excuse me, Bershusamar the answer Shlita. It's a cover to me, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay, Shkayach. Thank you for having me. Toysus um, brings down from the Babli that the Haftorah that we lay in on uh, Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh Av, is. Chachechem umayadechem sana nafshi. It says, Toysvis, we do not follow what it says in Talmud Bavli. Now, I could ask you a trivia question. Normally, Bavli, you shall me, you always follow the Bavli. Kemat, Kemat, you always follow the Bavli, you always me. Bavli and a Medrash, you always follow the Bavli. It's a one area where even though it says in Talmud Bavli, do A, we do not follow what it says in the Gemara. 
Why not? Says Toysus, we do not follow Talmud Bavli. Instead, what do we do? We lane um, Divrei Yermia, Shimud Var Hashem, and then Chazoin. Vahatam, says Toysus. Even though Talmud Bavli advises us to do one thing, we follow what it says in the Psikta, Loimar Gimel de Paranusa, to uh, we lay in the Gimel de, Par- de Paranias, before Tishabav. Divrei Yermia, Shimud Var Hashem, Chazoin. Okay. Then, says Toysus, and after Tishabav, we lay in Shiva de Nechemta. And after Shiva de Nechemta, we lay in Tarti de Tiyofta. There's no mention in Shas of this. It's not in the Talmud Babli. It's not in the Talmud Yushalmi. All the only Makar we have is the Psikta. So it comes out very interesting because the Psikta is earlier than the Babli. So really it comes out that the earliest legislated Haptar that we lay in the entire year are the Shiva de Nechemta. Because all the, all the other Haftaras, by the way, it's interesting, uh, Parshas Bereshis. Where does it say what Haftar we lay in The answer says absolutely nowhere what Haftar to lay in Bereshis. Shema, Noyach, Lech, Lech, Yerech, It doesn't say anywhere what Haftar is to lay on any given Shabbos. It says in the Gemara Megillah, the Yom and Tovim. It says in the Gemara Megillah, Rosh Chodesh. But each particular Shabbos, it does not mention uh, anywhere. In fact, though, uh, we just, uh, I see some chavir, and we were just in Italy. We did one of these tours in Italy. We were in a shul, and it says, the Kriya Satoya this week is Pashas Balak. And it says, the Haftoya was, Vahoyo Ze Shalayim from Micha. Uh, it's not the Haftoya. That's not the Haftoya. That's the Haftoya they lane. We lane uh, Vahoyo Sheiris Yaakov. It's not a kasha, it's not a problem. It doesn't say anywhere on any given week which Haftarah to lane. It was given, it was nimsar to the Chachme Hadar to choose the most appropriate Haftarah. But it's not a problem. Except for the Yomim Toivim. The Yomim Toivim, the Haftarahs are legislated. And, says Toisvis, the Shiva de Nechemta actually come from the Psikta. And therefore we're going to see they're the most important Haftarahs the entire year. And it makes Nachkamin as a halacha. And we'll see what they are. By the way, says Toysus, if you're having a hard time uh, remembering what the uh, order of these Haftaris are and what they are, so here's a good mnemonic. Says Toysus, the Simonich, the Shach, the Shach is Divrei Yirmiyahu, Shimudvar Hashem, and um, Chazoin. And what are the Shiva Denachemta, Noya, Arkish, which is na, um, Nachamu, Nachamu, Vatayim Ratzioin, and Ania Sayara. Anoichi Humanachem Chem, Rani Akara, Kumi Oiri, and Sois Asis, and then Dash is Dershu, and finally Shuva Yisra. So that's a good mnemonic. If you're having a hard time remember, just remember Dashach, Noya Arkish, Dash. You know, it's a very catchy, uh, catchy phrase to help you remember it. Okay. So why am I pointing out that these are the most important Haftarahs the whole year? They're very interesting Shuva. We're good, or we have to start over? <laughs> what? No, now we're good. Okay, make believe you didn't hear it. We're going to start every... No, okay. So, there's a very interesting tshuva. There's a tshuva, Shaila Shachuma Tzemach Tzedek. Who Shaila Shachuma Tzemach Tzedek? Not to be confused with Lubavit Shereba Tzemach Tzedek. This is called Tzemach Tzedek Harishan. Tzemach Tzedek Harishan was Ramnach Mendel Krachmel. Nachman of Krachman lived from 1600 to 1661. He's the Avbezdin of Nicholsburg, a Talmud of the Bach. Why did he call his Sefer Tzemach Tzedek? The Gematria of Menachem Mendel is Tzemach Tzedek. So if your name is Menachem Mendel and you want to write a Sefer, you know, Tzemach Tzedek is always a, a good title to use. So Tzemach Tzedek, in fact, he's so early that the Magen Avram, the Magen Avram quotes the Tzemach Tzedek, for example, there was a situation, we know there's a mitzvah to eat fish by all the students on Shabbos. So, okay, Friday night, you have your filter fish, Shabbos morning. What do you do by Shabbos? I remember, and uh, I was a rabbi in Queens. So there's a guy there from Krakow. So they had no good filter fish in Abach. So he used to say, then in Krakow they would say, B'mako im sheinish, herring is oichat the fish. That was the, we use a mitzvah to eat fish by all three students. So the shaila is, what if the uh, fishermen jack up the prices? Ad kedei kaf, you have to spend extra money to buy fish, even if it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So there's a famous tshuva. The Magavram brings a tzemach tzedek, Reb Nachman of Krachmel, who passes that if the, if the fishermen, even Jewish fishermen, are jacking up the prices, 
do not buy the fish because uh, never the other Yidden are going to have to suffer because of the raised prices. So the, the Tzemach Tzedek has an incredible tshuva. Says the Tzemach Tzedek, because these Haftaris are unique, and that all other Haftaris during the year, you can really lay in whatever you want. It's up to the Chachmei Hadar to choose an appropriate Haftarah. And these Haftarahs are legislated by the Psikta. Memela, Mamash Haflavafela. If you miss the Haftarah, you must make it up. Even if I miss Chris Haftarah, do I have to make up Chris Haftarah? Lavdafka. If you miss the Haftarah, you have to make up the Haftarah. Why? Because it's not... It's legislated by a medrash. The medrash says you have to lay in these half tires on this particular week. So he explains how you make it up. He says like this. Let's say by the tar- the um, shalosh de paranusa, if you miss divrei yermiyahu, the first one, and now comes the second week and they're laying shimud var Hashem, so that week you're going to lay in two half tires. You're going to start divrei yermiyahu, parak Aleph, and you're going to go straight through parak base to make up the half tire. We don't do that, Baresh, if, you, if you miss Baresh, you're not making it up Noyach. If you miss, you know, Vayer, you're not making it up Chaisar. That's because those Haftars are not as critical. It doesn't say what has to be laned. But when it comes to Shalosh, the Paranusa, if it's Shayach to make it up, you should do whatever you can. Ad Kach, that if for whatever reason a seaboard does not lane the Haftarah, now technically speaking, you have to lane from a cloth. I'm not, again, ask your... Uh, your own personal paisek. I know Rokhaim Knievsky holds that uh, there are enough Sifrei Torah. Everybody gives Sifrei Torah, Sifrei Torah, Sifrei Torah. You have to learn from a cloth. To the point where, if you, if you lay it from a Chumash, if the Balkari is laying from a Chumash, you have to say it along. About Chassidim, everybody says it, right? But um, by us, one person says it. If they're not laying from a cloth, everyone has to say it along. If you're laying from a cloth, you don't say it along. You're Yoytse from the... If a tzibor, for whatever reason, they could not get the cloth going for week one, the next week they're going to lean two haftaras to make it up. Because number one, these haftaras are legislated by the psikta, and number two, they really follow each other back to back. So if you miss one, you could easily segue into the second haftara. Fine. That's the tshuva of the tzemach tzedek. I want to read to you his uh, lashon at the end of the tshuva. This is uh, Simon Kufchavav. Says the tzemach tzedek. He says, "Lekach kol kama de efsher let's do date sedadim de lo yiu nidches haftaras de nechemta legamri." Whatever we could do not to push off the haftaras of the shiva de nechemta, e dolgu leizem ahen. If you skip one of them, shafir dami. That's the correct thing to do. In other words, if you miss a haftara, do whatever you can to make it up. Ulekach mistabra lemeimer de gam la haftara v'atoymer tzioin for pasha seikav. Or Anoichi Anoichi, Pasha Shoiftim, and Kumi Oiri for Pasha's Kisavai, Yesh Lahem Tashlumim Be'inyan Zet, they can be made up. These are the only Haftaras of the year that are able to be made up, and you don't want to miss. Bechlal, it's the only time of the year that the Zman is named after the Haftarah. I mean, you don't have uh, no other time of the year. The Zman of the year, the time of the year is named. It's Shiva Dinachemta. The time of the year is named after the Haftaras of the year. Ad Kedei Kach. There's a Machloikas Rishonim. Rosh Chodesh Av. Rosh Chodesh Elo. Shechal Yos B'Shabbos. Now typically, when Rosh Chodesh comes out on Shabbos, you lay in Hashemayim Kisi. So Hashemayim Kisi is a very important Haftarah. The Gemara Megillah mentions Hashemayim Kisi. So if Rosh Chodesh would come out on a regular Haftarah, Avada. The Hashemayim Kisi is going to trump any Haftarah. But what if you have a battle between Hashemayim Kisi and Shiva Dinachemta? Comes the Mordechai in the Sechta Megillah, Perak Dalek number four. The Imikla Rosh Chodesh Elo B'Shabbos Ein Maftirin Hashemayim Kisi. Why? Ki Ein Medalgin Shiva Dinachemta. You cannot skip the Shiva Dinachemta no matter what. So what do you mean? But it's Shas. Shas says you have to lay in Shemaim Kisi. Shiva Denchemta is only a Psikta. No. The Psikta, when it comes to Kriya Satorah, Psikta is a more authoritative source than even Talmud Babli. And the Shiva Denchemta would trump Hashemaim Kisi. Says the Mordechai, Uvishpaira inspires. In the region in Germany, they had a different custom. Nagu Ledaleg Zayin Denchemas Mednei Hashemaim Kisi. They would continue to lay in 
Ahashemayim Kesi. So, but Ad Kedei Kaf, there's a sheet on the Rishayim that the Shiva de Nechemta is so important that if Rosh Chodesh Av or Elo would come out on Shabbos, you would lay in Shiva de Nechemta and you would not lay in Shemayim Kesi. By the way, how do we paskin? It's Machlokis Rishayim and it's Machlokis between the Machaber and the Rama. If you look at number five, in Simen, Taf, Chaf, He, Sif, Aleph, Shulchan Aruch says on Rosh Chodesh that Shechalios B'Shabbos, Maftirin, Hashemayim, Kesi, Chutz Me Rosh Chodesh Elul, Shechalios B'Shabbos, except for Rosh Chodesh Elul that comes out on Shabbos, Shemaftirin, Ani Asoyara. The Mechaber is paskening like the Mordechai. That the Shiva de Nechemta is so important that it trumps Hashemayim Kisi. Says the Ramah, no, V'yeshoimrim, Hashemayim Kisi. V'chein no'ya yom de'as elu. But Rosh Chodesh Av, now that's, you're going to lay in um, the, ta- the Shalosh to Paranusa. Then the Ramah says, no, V'yeshoimrim, Hashemayim Kisi, V'chein Eker. So really it's Machloikas, Machaber, and Ramah. Do you stay with Hashemayim Kisi? The Mechaber paskins like the Mordechai that you lay in Shiva de The Ramah paskins like the Minog Shpaira that you lay in Hashemayim Kisi. I believe we follow the Ramah that we lay in uh, Hashemayim Kisi. Says the Taz, why? So we would have said, uh, because the Talmud Bavli says Hashemayim Kisi, and the Psikta says Shiva de so we're going to follow Talmud Bavli. No! Listen to the Taz. Because Hashemayim Kisi also has Psukim of Nechama in it. The psukim of Nechamas Yerushalayim is included in Hashem Kisi. What pasuk? Pasuk of Simchu as Yerushalayim, Vigilu ba Kolay Haveha, Sisu Ita Masoyz Kol Hamesabel Malav. From which the Gemara Darshins Kol Hamesabel Yerushalayim Zoyche Veroya Bishuasa. So it's not the pshat that Rosh Chodesh is more important than Shem Nechemta. It's if you're going to lay in Hashemayim Kisi, you're going to kill two birds with one stone. You're Yoytze Rosh Chodesh. Your Yoyt says Shiva de Nechemta, so that's a better option, and that's the way we go with. Lamaisa, the Svardim, go like the Mechaber, and they go like the Mecha, and they go like the Mordechai, that no matter what, you always lay in Shiva de Nechemta. Nothing trumps Shiva de Nechemta. So you see, you get a little inkling into the importance of the Shiva de Nechemta. That Lamaisa, Lehalacha, they're the most important Avtars of the year. If you miss them, could be you have to make it up. If a kahila misses them, they certainly have to make it up. And the whole zman of the, t- of the year is called Shiva de Nechemta. So let's try to talk about a few in Yanam over here. Sun Zorosh Chodesh Elo. Chodesh we're going to blow Shoifar, and we hope we're going to start doing Tshuva. The last thing on anyone's mind is Nechama over Yerushalayim. Comes the first week of Chodesh Elo, Anoichi, anoichi, hu We're still leaning about Nechamas Yishlein. Second week of Elo, you know, you're getting ready. Where am I going to go for Shlichus? Where am I going to be for Yom Naran? You would expect to start hearing a little bit about Shuva. The Rav's giving Musar, Iver, and Ka. The Haftaira, Nachamal, Shiva, the Nechamah. Then, Mamish, a week, two, ten days before Rosh Hashanah. Vaiter, Shiva, the Nechamah. Kumi, Oiri, Kiva, Oirech. It's the week before Rosh Hashanah. It's Atem Mitzavim Hayoim Kulchem. Zoyar says Hayoim is Rosh Hashanah. Atem so what's the Haftoira? Sois Asis Bashem. Why do we continue laying Shema? We're done with that. We're finished with Yushalayim. Most people say, I was, I was Misnach Shabbos Nachamu. I got all my Nechama that I needed. I'm good for the Nechama for the year. Ready to move on to the next stage of the year. How much Nechama do you need already? I mean, it's era of Rosh Hashanah. People are shlung. Well, what's going on? How seven weeks are up to Rosh Hashanah? Let's look at the order of the Shiva de and this is the biggest pella b'chlam. If you look at number two, so I broke it down for you. All seven half Torahs of the Shiva de come from the Novi Yeshaya, from the second half of the Sefer, from Perak Mem and on. So. Uh, the first half Torah is Yeshaya Perek Mem Nachamu Nachamu Ami Yoimar Elokechem Twenty Six Psukim. So far, so good. Vatoimer Tzioi Nazavani Hashem is Yeshaya Perek Mem Tes to Perek Non Aleph. So far, we're in order. The third half Torah is Ania Soyra Loinuchama 
the end of Perak Nun Dalet. Okay? So, so far we're going in sequential order. Comes the fourth half Torah. Anoichi, Anoichi, Humanachem, Chem. We're going backward to Perak Nun Aleph. Why do we do that? The fifth half Torah. Rani Akar Yalada. The beginning of Nun Dalet. Now listen carefully. There are two problems here. First of all, Aniya Sayara, which is the third, is the end of Nun Dalet. Rani Akara, which is the fifth, is the beginning of Nun Dalet. So the third and the fifth should be switched. Meaning, first should come Rani Akara, that's the beginning of Nun Dalet. Then should come Aniya Sayara, that's the end of Nun Dalet. And instead, we flip them around. We first lay in the end of Perak Nun Dalet, and then we lay in the beginning of Perak Nun Dalet. Anoichi, Anoichi, Hu Menachemchem is Perak Nun Aleph. It should come before any of them. So the order should be Nachamu, Batoimer, which we do. We should then go to Anoichi, Anoichi, Hu Menachemchem. We should then go to Rani Akara, come back to Ani Asayara. Why in the world do we lay the Haftars out of order? That's not how they appear in the Navi Yeshaya. Why do we lay them in this order? But understand, there are two things out of order. Haftarah 3 and Haftarah 5 are switched. And Bechlal, Haftarah 4 should be before both of them. Before both of them. So what's going on over here? So Toysus, and the Sefton Megillah, alludes to this problem. And Toysus says that the reason why we're makdim Aniya Sayara before Rani Akara is because when you give somebody Nechama, the derech is you do it in a progressive way. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. So somehow what Toysus is saying is Aniya Sayara is less, and then Anoichi Anoichi is a little bit more, and Rani Akara is a little bit more. It's a little, it's very difficult because why the Navi didn't write it that way. The Navi wrote it in a different way. That means the Navi felt that that was the appropriate way for it to appear in the Navi. So why do we lane it in a completely different order? There's a beautiful lavosh, a gorgeous lavosh. The lavosh in Simon, Taf Reish Ches, Siv Ches. It's a number eight on your sheets. The lavosh was a Talmud of the Ramah, a Talmud of the Marshal, and the lavosh says an incredible thing. Says Lavush, the truth is, there's no end to how much nechama that, that we need. Really, if the Shalash of Paranusa would be laned, Chveis and Chezran, we would be having our bond in Nechemta. We, we really need as much nechama as we can. Elamai, we're at the end of the year, so the Rebbe Hashem is menachim us until the end of the year. There's no end, there's ain saif, how much nechama we need. The year is over already, so Tichla Shana Vikalaisa, but until Ad Saif Ashana, we get Nechama Ad Rosh Hashanah. Then the uh, Lavush says that why do we have seven weeks? What's the significance of seven weeks? Lavush brings down a Medrash. It's a mashal to a queen who her whole family was taken into captivity. The king, her sons, her daughters, her mother, her father, the sons-in-law, daughter-in-law, and they start to tell her, you know, they're coming back, they're, they're, they're coming back to you. So the first week they tell her, your father's coming, your mother's coming, your son's coming, your daughter's coming, your brother's coming, your sister's coming, until finally they tell the queen, the Melech himself is returning. That's the concept of the Shiva Denachemta. But still says the Lavosh, that doesn't explain the order of the Haftars. Why are the Haftars out of order? So the Lavush brings down an Abu Jaham, and the truth is, there's a Vart from Ramir Shapiro, or Gwina Rav, in the Mayana Shalpaira, which has a little bit of a different Nusach. We're going to say over the Lavush. The Lavush says something absolutely gorgeous. Says Lavush, the Medrash tells us, that after the Chorim Beis HaMikdash, the Riban Sham comes to the Nevi'im, and he says to the Nevi'im, Look at them. Look how much they're suffering. Go to Klal Yisrael and be Menachem Klal Yisrael. And Klal Yisrael looks at the Nevi'im and they turn to Yermia and they turn to Yeshaya and they say, you weren't the one to destroy the Beit HaMikdash so we don't want your Nechama. What, the Rebbe Shem doesn't want to be Menachem us? No, we're not satisfied. It's not enough. It's not good enough. Get lost. We're not interested in your Nechama. 
So the Nevi'im then go back to Rebbein Shalom and say, Rebbein Shalom, you know, you sent us on the mission, we were faithful to the mission, but uh, they're not interested. So Rebbein Shalom says, really? Then I'm going to have to do it myself. That's the Medrash. Says the Levush, this conversation and this storyline is played out in the opening psukim of the Shiva Denachemta. The first haftar of the Shiva Denachemta is Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, Yoimar, Eloikechem. Where the Nevi'im come to, to Klal Yisrael and they say, Klal Yisrael, the Rebbein Nishalam says, have a Nechama, be consoled, everything is going to be okay. So what does it say in the next week's Haftarah? V'atoi meretzioi nazavani Hashem v'Hashem shleichani. Chal Yisrael says what? Rebbein Shalom forsook me? Rebbein Shalom is not interested in me? Well, well, he's sending a shliach to make me feel better. Well, why? He doesn't like me anymore. So the, the Chal Yisrael says to the Nevi'im, V'atoi meretzioi nazavani Hashem v'Hashem shleichani. By the way, Chaim Knievsky says, that's this week, right? Atoy Mertzion Azavani Hashem. Says of Chaim Knievsky, Atoy Mertzion Azavani Yud Kei Vav Kei V'Alef Dalanon Yud Shechechani. Why the switch? Says of Chaim, we know the Yud Kei Vav Kei, B'chlal we don't pronounce. And the Alef Dalanon Yud, we pronounce. But, listen to this. Batoy Mertzion Azavani Hashem. The Yud Kei Vav Kei for, forsook me completely. He forsook me so much, we can't even say his name. And the Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, that we could say his name, Shechechani, he seems to have forgotten about us. That's why the Navi switches it. The Aziva is going on the Yud Kei Vav Kei. The Shechechani is going on the Aleph Dalet Nun Yud. So what happens? The Nevi'im come back to the Rebani Shalom, and they say, Rebani Shalom, this impoverished, storm-tossed nation will not be consoled. You told me, you told us to console Klal Yisrael, but they're not going to be consoled. So what does Rebbe Hashem respond? I will console myself. I'm going to go to Klal Yisrael myself, and I'm going to console them. And therefore the Rebbe Hashem addresses us directly. Rani Akara Layalada. Kumi oiri, the Rebbe Hashem tells Kai, so get up. Kumi oiri, your light has risen. Kiva oirech. And then finally, Kla Yisrael, Erev Rosh Hashanah, is able to say, Sois Asis, Vashem. We're able to rejoice in the Rebbe Hashem himself. Says the Lavosh, Avada, the Haftars are out of order from what, the way it says in the Navi Yeshaya. But the reason why it was formulated this way is because this is his playing out the historical narrative of what took place after the Chorban, where Klai Yisrael was told by the Nevi'im, Nechama, and Klai Yisrael said, what, the Rebbe Hashem forsook me? Why isn't the Rebbe Hashem Menachim himself? And the Nevi'im go back to the Rebbe and the Rebbe Hashem says, fine, anoichi, anoichi, menachem chem. Says the Levush, that's Pshat. Lemaisa Ramir Shapiro has a little bit of a different nosuch, he quotes a Medrash, that the Rebbe Hashem tells the Umay Sa'olam to be Menachim us, and Klal Yisrael says, we're not interested in Nechama from the Germans, we're not interested in Nechama from the Arabs, we're not interested in Nechama from the Umay Sa'olam, Rebbein Shalom, what, you forsook us? We're not, loy nuchama ni asayra, loy nuchama, to which Rebbein Shalom says, okay, if that's the case, anoichi, anoichi, hu menachem chem. Nachamu, nachamu. So what's the Nechama? Imagine somebody needs Nechama and you go over to them. Be consoled! Be consoled! Say, You touched me. Well, what, what's the big Nechama over here? The Navi is shouting at us. Nachamu! Nachamu! Be consoled! Be consoled! He said, who told you? Hashem said be consoled! How? Well, what's the consolation? So I remember I heard from uh, Rav Victor Miller, Zechatzak Bracha. In England, there's something called the Royal Order of the Knights of the Bath. So in England, the King of England would be a, as a grove of and he had a far stink in the back. And if you were Zoycha, to have the privilege to go into the King's Bath, they would give you a washcloth, and you would stick it in the soap, 
and the king you smelled he was a manuvel a mushchis uh, and you would be zoicha to wipe one inch of the back of the king not more more would be too much cover and if you were zoicha to rub one inch of the smelly b- back of the king you would wear special begadim you would wear begadim that you're a member of the royal order of the knights of the bath and your wife would wear royal begadim and your brother and sister would wear royal begadim. And your children would wear royal begadim. Why? Because you're zoicha to have a shaychos to the melech. You belong to the royal association of the knights of the bath. If you think that's a covet, I'll tell you a bigger covet even. If you were really zoicha, you could be a member of the royal order of the knights of the garter. Where after the king's bath, he would stick out his farshtinkana, fungal-infested, yeast-infested toe, and you would take one sock, and you would put the sock on the king's foot. Not two socks. That would be too much covered. And if you were zoicha to put a sock on the king, you were a member of the royal knights of the order of the garter, and you would wear a royal begadim. And if anyone would look at you bad, they would kill you. Ad Hayoim! In England, there are people who wear begadim that they're a royal member of the Knight of the Garter. Because their Zayda put a sack on someone's foot who you wouldn't even want to be in the same room as one of their toes. But they had a shaykhus to the king. You know what kind of covet it is? You know what kind of merit it was? It says, Rabbi Yonis and Ibishetz, the Nechama, Nachamu, Nachamu, you know what the Nechama is? One word. The Yubar Hashem says, Ah, me. You're my people. You have this chus to put on tefillin that shows you're a royal member of the Knights of Kal Yisrael. You have this chus to take out of the talis baitel, a talis, and we're begodim that you're an eved to the melech. Not only you, your children, your family, you have shaykhs to the king. Lahavdil elef alfei avdolais, the greatest nechama, the greatest covered, the greatest aliyah, the greatest status, that nachamu nachamu, the status is ami, that's the entire nechama. Nachamu nachamu, that the Rebun Hashem could tell every year, ami. You're one of mine. You're royalty. You're malchus. What's the double nechama? Why do we need a double nechama? Nachamu nachamu. So you know the Medrash says, Chet chata Yushalayim, you sin doubly. We were punished doubly. Kilakcha kiflayim. Kilakcha miyad Hashem kiflayim. And therefore we need a double nechama, nachamu nachamu. What does this mean? What does it mean, a double chet? A double nechama. So it's brought in the Sifrei Chasidus. B'nai Yisrael brings it down. And the Arve Nachal brings it down. Arve Nachal is Rabbi David Ibeshitz. No relation to Rabbi Yainasan. You will open up any Shulchan Aruch. On the Magen Avram, you see little Hagois, Levushe Srad. That's Rabbi David Ibeshitz, the Arve Nachal. So he says like this. By the Oynesh and Shabbos Chazoyim, we say, Ki Pi Hashem Diber. What's Hashem? Yud Kei Vav Kei. Diber. Diber is Diber Kasha. Difficult, harsh. Think about what Kali Yisrael did. That at the time of the Churban, not only did Yubar Hashem have to punish us, but the Yud Kei Vav Kei, the Midas Harachamim, turned over and was Nishapech to Midas Hadin, that it's not Kipi Eloikim Diber. It's Kipi Hashem Diber. That the Yud Kei Vav Kei was Nishapech Midas Hadin. Midas Harachamim was Nishapech to Midas Hadin. Kipi Hashem Diber. Comes the Nechama, and the Rebbe Hashem says, Not only Nachamu, Nachamu, Yoimar, not only will now be Amir Araka, not only will be soft, Yoimar Eloikechem, the Midas Hadim will be maskim to the Rachamim. You're going to be Mishapech Midas Hadim to agree to consent <coughs> to support the Midas Harachamim. Memela, it's a double Nechama. Not only will there be Midas Harachamim, but even Midas Hadim will agree, will be Yoimar Eloikechem. In this week's Haftarah, we end off Parak Nonalaf of Yeshaya. It's in number 21. 
You have the Psukim over here. Say, Shimu Eli, the Novi says, listen to me. Roit Feit Tzedek, those who pursue righteousness. Mevach Shei Hashem. Habitu El Tzor Chutzavtem. Look at the rock that you were carved out of. V'el Makeves Bar Nukartem. And the hollow of the pit that you were dug. Habitu El Avraham Avichem. Look at Avraham Avinu. V'el Sarah Tuchel Elochem. And Sarah Yimenu. Ki Echad Karasiv. I called them one and I blessed them. Ki Nicham Hashem Tzion. Nicham Kol Charoiseha. Ma Hashmita Eitzel. I've seen that. What in the world is nobody talking about? What well, Avram and Sarah got to do with the price of tea in China? What do we bring in Avram and Sarah for? It's not Parshas Vayera. If it be Parshas Vayera, it would be a good after. What do you mean Habitu? What do you mean look at Avraham Avinu? Look at Sarah Imenu? I heard it. I know who they are. What's that got to do with Kinicham Hashem Tzia Nicham Karchal Versam? There was once a min, the Gemara in Sanhedrin says, that says to Rab Ami, Rab Ami, there's not going to be any Tchias HaMesim. Tchias HaMesim, the people are dirt. Dirt will not turn into life. And Rabbi Ami responded, what are you talking about? Deloy hava chaye, if someone who never existed became alive, dahavu chaye loy koshikain, somebody who was alive, all the more so they will be resuscitated. The raya to Tchiyas HaMesim is like this. If someone who didn't exist and was created in Rucha came out of nothing, Allah has kama kama. Somebody who did exist and then passed away will be revived and resuscitated. Says Tamide Chsam Seifer. You look at Yerushalayim and you look at it Bechor Banai and it's bereft of Klal Yisrael and it doesn't have Shechina and the Kedusha is gone and you try to think to yourself, how in the world will Yerushalayim ever be rebuilt? Says Ribanisham, what's the problem? Where does Klal Yisrael come from? Klal Yisrael comes from absolutely nothing. Saro Yimeinu was an Akara. Not only that, the Gemara Yivama says, Saro Yimeinu, Ayla Nesaisa. So I mean, she didn't even have a rat. Avram Avinu was 100 years old. It wasn't, you know, statistically unlikely. It wasn't highly improbable. It was impossible for them to have a child. And yet, says the Navi, Ki echad karasev. I called them one. Meaning, they would only be one and they would never be two. It was impossible for them ever to reproduce. And yet, look at Kla Yisrael, K'choich ve'ashamayim. So let's make a kavachaymer, says the Navi. Look at Abraham and look at Sarah. That means Kla Yisrael came from mamish nothing. And yet, we're so many. So if we could be rebuilt from absolutely nothing... Then Yushalayim, that once upon a time was in its glory and its majesty and its splendor and just, it was destroyed. Alachas kama v'kama. If the Yivon Shem could build the Klal Yisrael from absolutely nothing, kavachoymer ben benoisho kavachoymer ki nicham Hashem tzioin nicham kol charvoiseha vayasem ebar ke'edem varavasa kegan Hashem. So we have Shiva Denachemta. How many have stuck in the Shiva Denachemta? I don't know. I never counted. So, there's no time as good as now. Let's count. How many psukim are in the Shiva Denachemta? So we said, let's go back to number two. There are 26 psukim in Nachamu. There are 27 psukim in Vatoy Merzio and Azavani Hashem. There are 12 tzukim in Ania Sayara. So I have a problem. I was talking about the importance of getting a clap. The problem is in my shul, they just got a clap. They said, but now you have to lane it. <laughs> so I told them, I'm going to take Ania Sayara, and I'm going to take Rani Akar. Ania Sayara is 12 tzukim, the other one is 10 tzukim. You know, the other ones, you know. Those are the shortest half hours of the year. Anyway, so Ania Sayara is 12 tzukim. Anoichi Anoichi is 24 tzukim. Rani Akara is 10 psukim, Kumiyari is 22, Soisas is 23. A total of 144 psukim. So what, you know, <laughs> what, what's that going to do for us? If you count up the number of psukim of the Toichecha in the Torah, the Chukhoisai, 
Kisavai, Nitzavim, and Shiras Hazinu, there are 143 psukim, half of a fella. That the number of psukim of Nechama in the Nevi'im correspond perfectly to the number of psukim of Taichach on the Torah. Meaning, it's Midah Kenegad Midah. There is Ched Chata Yishalayim, there's Nachamu Nachamu Ami. But there's one more Pasuk of Nechama than there is Taichacha. So what's the Indian of that? Why are there 140 psukim of Nechama and 143 psukim of Taichacha? There's three weeks of Peronias. There's Shiva de Nechemta. So there's more Nechama than there is Peronias. Next week's parasha, Pashas Re'e. We say like this. Re'e, Anachim Noisim Mechneich Ha'ayim Brachol Klala. Es Ha'bracha. Yeah? Es Ha'bracha. Ve Ha'klala. Why by the Bracha is Es Ha'bracha? And by the Klala, it's Ve Ha'klala. It should be Es Ha'bracha, Es Ha'klala. So the Balaturim sort of says, Es is Bala Rabbis. And that's a very important Indian. And that Indian is, that when it comes to Toiva in this world, it's always S. It's B'Shafa. There's a lot of it. There's a tremendous amount of Chas De Hashem. Tremendous amount of Hatava. Tremendous amount of Shefa the Rebbe Hashem gives us. Vehaklala. It's not Es Haklala. The Avoida is to be able to understand and, and appreciate that even though there is Vehaklala, but the overwhelming majority of what there is and what we should see and understand in, in this world is Es Habracha. Es Balarabos, that there's always more Hatava than Klala. And even though there are 143 psukim of Klala, the Lamai Sivan Shalom says, I'm giving you one more, but it's more than one more. One more shows there's more Toiva in this world than there is Paranias. There's Shloisha de Paranusa, but there's Shiva de Nechamta. It's Bato Baraiv. It's, ba- it's Bato Baraiv. There's more. There's more Nechama than there is, than there is uh, Paranias. A member of Miller would say all the time, he would quote the Rambam, I never found the Rambam, but then they recently published with Miller Svarim, Shari Oira, he quotes the Rambam in the Marna Buchim says that there is more chesed in the world than there is tzara. And it's an avoida to be able to see it and to be able to appreciate it and to be able to feel it and to be able to experience it. And the avoida of the Shiva de Nechemta is to understand that, you know, Tisha B'av is a moyed. What's the moyed of Tisha B'av? What kind of moyed is it? It's a moyed. With, with Yom and Tovim like that, you know. I think the Kloisenberger Rebbe once said, I think I once saw it in one of the Svarim, I can't tell you where, that the Navi tells us, the Shetzef, Ketzef, Hestarti, Ponai, Rega, Mimech, Lerachmen, Gedoy, Lamakatech. So let's think like this. The Rav Hashem saying that b'shetzav ketzav. In a moment of anger, I hid my face from you. And with great mercy, I'm going to gather you in. Rega katoin azavtich. It was a small moment I forsook you. I'm going to gather you in. Rega katoin azavtich. Think about all the tragedies that happened in Jewish history. Yeah, in the eyes of the Rebbe it's 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 a rega katan, which means that the hatava and the chesed that is in store for Klal Yisrael, and that we can anticipate and that we hope for, is rachamim gedolim compared to rega katan, meaning a person should take a look at the book of Kinnis and say this book of Kinnis is rega katan, and the chesed that the Rebbe Hashem has in store for us is rachamim gedolim. That means if the kinnis is this big, then the encyclopedias of and the volumes of Hatava that we're going, we hope for and we anticipate and we know Dabar Echem and Vachala Yasha Rekam is gonna be a thousandfold, Mida Taiva Marubach five hundred times. So in, in other words, if a person wants to get a glimpse, how much Hatava is in store by Akhras Ayamim? The only way to do so is to take Tishabav and make an equation, extrapolate. That if this is Midas Peronias, then Mida Toiva Maruba Chamesh Meos Mea, Chamesh Meos Pamim. In other words, the only way to get a glimpse into the Chesed of the Achras Hayamim is to take Tishabav 
and then take out your calculator and times it by 500, and that's the chesed that we hope for. And in that way, Tisha B'Av is a mayed, because it gives us a glimpse, so much hatava, so much chesed. Yeah, that's what we hope for. So we hope all of Klal Yisrael should feel the nechama of the Shiva de Nechemta, and the Shiva de Nechemta takes us all the way up to Rosh Hashanah. Why all the way up to Rosh Hashanah? Enough already, you know. We had Chorben, we have Nechama, so how much Nechama do we need? Chazal understand that in order for a person to do tshuva, if they feel that the Rivan Sham, in other words, why can't we skip the Nechama, go from Shalosh to Parnusa, straight to Rosh Hashanah? You think the Rivan Sham punished us, so we should do tshuva right away. Apparently, it's not possible to do tshuva. If a person feels beat down, a person feels rejected and punished, is it, okay, I'm rejected? Then have a nice day. I'm out of here also. In order to be able to be machzer b'tshuva, in order to be able to return, a person has to feel the yimin makariv. So the shiva and the Ribbon Shalom says, I understand, I know, I know it's not shayich to do tshuva. I don't know it's not possible to return. Ad Rosh Hashanah mamish. We're still getting the Chama more and more and more so we could feel the Avas Hashem and we should talk a Bizoicha to the Rachamim, Gedoilim, Akabzech, and the Nechama of Klal Yisrael with the coming of Gula Shlema and the Binyam Beis Amigdash, Sheibana, Bimhera, Liyomena. Shkaya. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.